Hey folks, it's Mike. Uh, I'm back at Assiniboine Park and uh, this time I've set myself a bit of a challenge. Um, I'm going to switch from digital to analog. That's right, I'm going to shoot with some film. Um, in fact, uh, this is the only canister film that uh, I've got and uh, I've had to choose between three different cameras that can accept this this type of film, 135. Uh, it was a choice between uh, the uh, Canon uh, EOS 300, um, built in 1998, uh, the Canon uh, T7, yeah, let me try this one more time, Canon T70 built in eight, 1984, and the Canon FTB QL built in 1971. And uh, the winner is the Canon FTB QL. Um, it was uh, the most popular uh, choice on uh, on the polls that I put on uh, Instagram and Facebook, and uh, as uh, as well, it was kind of a choice I was kind of pulling for, yeah, you know. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go around the park and uh, and uh, shoot, and uh, so yeah, and. Uh, Here's the beast in question. Uh, it's uh, basically all metal construction, uh, weighs five, six tons, something like that. Uh, and uh, basically it's almost all manual. Uh, the only uh, sort of digital control that it's got is uh, it's got a, uh, an exposure meter built in, but it, it it's a bit complex. I don't even understand it myself, but um, it's, uh, it's uh, it's it's a good camera. I've uh, I've, I've seen uh, some pretty good reviews of it before, so uh, I'll uh, say I'll give it a shot. All right, uh, first step to uh, getting film into this uh, this camera is to uh, open it up. So just uh, take this little uh, um, dial here, pull it all the way out. And you should be able to open. Sorry, hard to do with one hand ish. But uh, anyway, this is uh, this is it open, and uh, basically you just load the film in there and uh, party on. All right, it's all set. To, uh, to explain the process of, uh, you know, loading the film, uh, basically what I did was open up the back, um, put the, uh, the film cartridge in, uh, the side that has the dial, and then uh, from there, uh, pulled out a bit of film just so I could stretch it to the other side of uh, the camera and just started rolling it in uh, to, a, you know, some sort of wheel that's in there, uh, hamster wheel, something like that. And then uh, basically, uh, um, basically uh, pulled this, uh, this lever here, which is what you use to advance the film, and then press the, uh, the shutter on top of here just to s sort of start the process of uh, allowing you to uh, take photos. And uh, well, it's 24 uh, exposures uh, that, uh, that's on this uh, roll of film and uh, once, uh, once it's done, uh, I'll uh, take it in to uh, get it processed. Um, what uh, I'm actually going to, uh, to do is, uh, there's options for just processing the film, you know, developing it, and uh, getting it cut into strips of four, um, which is the option I'm choosing. The other option is uh, to uh, get it uh, developed, scanned, and printed. Uh, 
which is uh, an additional expense to it, which I'm not too concerned with, but uh, because I, you know, I want to be able to uh, take the photos that are scanned, and then I'm going to um, basically uh, take that into uh, Lightroom, make adjustments, you know, do the usual uh, photo editing. Um, so yeah, and I should also thank Don's Photo because they're the ones who sold the film to me. Um, it's a great place to go, great people, um, and uh, they're also the ones uh, developing the film. So Don's Photo, go go, uh, go see them if you're in Winnipeg. Don't get a camera pet. There we go.
All right, so I'm finding that um, there is an auto exposure meter um, built into this, which is battery powered, which uses an old mercury style battery, which isn't being made anymore for, you know, environmental reasons. Fair enough. There are modern replacements you can use, but you kind of have to make some adjustments. Um, I did buy uh, a hearing aid battery, can't remember which model number, I'll probably just put it right there somewhere. But uh, find out it didn't really work, probably because it's a little too small and so I sort of need to wedge it in a little bit, but whatever. Um, so as um, an alternative, what I've been doing is using my 77D, to uh, essentially help me with my exposure um, and then just adjusting the uh, shutter speed and the aperture as needed. And uh, hopefully I'm, I'm doing pretty good here. I'm, I think I am, I'm doing good. Only downside is I'm shooting with uh, 400 ISO film, um, which on a sunny-ish day is good, but I can't push the, the aperture all the way open to like 1.8. It's a trade-off, what can I say? Um, mainly, I bought the 400 mainly because I figured it's a good all-purpose um, ISO to, to work with. I didn't want to get 100 because I may have to shoot at really show, slow, show slutter, yeah, slow at shutter speeds. And uh, yeah, my knees just can't handle being that stable anymore. I just can't. Oh. Anyway, as you can see, uh, the little numbers here closest to the, uh, the body itself is the aperture. Um, this dial here controls the shutter speed, and there's also a uh, control here to set the, uh, the ISO for the film. Um, you can, and come on, get in focus, jeez. Uh, apparently, my camera does not want to work with me. But, anyway, uh, what you do need to do to advance the film is just to do that, and then when you're ready to shoot, uh, just switch that down and then you can press the shutter. Alright, I will say that uh, now that the, uh, the roll of film is done, uh, is indicated right there where it says it's pretty much right at 24, um, uh, at this point you'll have to rewind the film so that you can actually, you know, go send it in and get it developed. Um, I will say that, uh, you know, with film, um, you have to be careful. You, you don't want to uh, open the back of this sucker up uh, to expose the film because you, you ruin it and you don't want to do that. Especially when you're, you're paying, you know, money for actually buying the film and money for actually developing the film. Anyway, alright, so at this point, uh, there's this little button right there at the bottom and there's also this right here up at the top, so uh, just pop that sucker open like that and, and hold down the button there and then start rolling and of course it would help if I actually started rolling the right way all right so I got the screw back on 
sorry about that. Uh, so here we go. And theoretically what should happen is that the counter there, down there at the bottom there, showing you how many exposures you've shot, should decrease in value until you reach the end. So, and yeah, sorry, it's not really in frame, but I'm trying, what can I say? So, just do that, and keep going. And, okay, it feels like it's really loose now, so it theoretically um, should be rolled back up, should. So, at this point, you should be able to, but um, to be on the safe side, I'll probably just do this in the dark, because I don't want to accidentally expose any film. So, yeah. Uh, so I guess at this point, what I'll do is uh, throw, it to the, uh, throw it to the studio. Back to you, Mike, in the studio. So as you can uh, see from the uh, the setup I've got here, um, I've got um, well, a borrowed 6D, my wife's of course, uh, with her 100 uh, macro lens, and uh, in terms of shooting the uh, the film itself, I've got basically a little sort of jig that I've created out of cardboard and tape um, to to hold the. Um, the, uh, the film in there and behind it I've got a, uh, a Godox LED light uh, to, to give it plenty of light and uh, just a little you know something on top just to sort of keep things stable it's a bit janky yeah I know but it works you know um, I mean you don't have to go all sophisticated and get uh, you know a, a some, some sort of uh, film uh, holder and you know shoot up uh, against a uh, you know, a big uh, light table and that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I mean, it works for me. I, uh, I will also say that um, with uh, with the film, uh, you basically uh, you know need to make sure that it's uh, it's dust free and, and well as scratch free as possible. But uh, I mean sometimes that's not really possible. But um, you you know you do what you can. But uh, you know I've got uh, got uh, a uh, an air blower and uh, a microfiber cloth to uh, to wipe off the dust from uh, from the film. Uh, you know, as I say, so I can get a, as clean an image as, uh, as possible. And uh, as you can see here, I've got uh, the film all uh, lined up with the, uh, the camera, pretty much. Um, and uh, I've got the, uh, the macro lens set up to, you know, shoot as close as I can, which probably is about, yeah, I'll say seven, eight inches, something like that. Um, but uh, as you can see, the uh, the film is, is is all sort of red and you know yellow and other such, which is you know it's a negative. You, you have to convert it to a positive. So you know after I uh, shoot all of the uh, the film um, with the uh, with the 60, I'll uh, then take it into uh, to Lightroom to uh, essentially uh, flip things around so that uh, you see a positive image. And uh, hey, you know. Can't hurt to be positive. All right, um, well, I will say that uh, when you um, are shooting with film, don't open the back of the camera. Basically, that's the one most important rule you have to learn about film photography. Don't open the back. Otherwise, you're gonna get uh, exposed film, which is useless, you won't get anything. Just this. As you can see, this is uh, um, one of the uh, the exposures uh, from the film um, that I shot with my wife's uh, Canon 60. Thank you, dear, for letting me borrow your camera and your macro lens. Um, so, uh, as you can see, this is very psychedelic looking colors, which, you know, hey, if you're into that, awesome. 
So, uh, uh, and I will also say um, that since this is a negative, you have to turn to a positive. And it's more than just thinking about positive thoughts. Yeah. Anyway, uh, at this point, uh, all you have to do is uh, take the, uh, the tone curve here that you see, flip it right on its head. And that's closer to what you want. Um, you still do have to make uh, some more adjustments uh, just to, well, as, as you can see here, uh, get rid of sort of the, the teal color from, uh, from this image. Um, so yeah. As you can see here, this is, this is closer to what the, the final image will look like. Um, you know, you just still have to make a, a few more adjustments like, uh, well, I mean, yeah, as you can see, it's sort of underexposed, so we can uh, try and, uh, you know, fix that with, uh, you know, maybe doing, raising the blacks. Uh, no, that's too dark. Wait a minute. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Um, you have to sort of think the opposite. Um, sort of, you know, again, flip things on its head. So, uh, yeah, in terms of, um, say, if you want to brighten an image up usually you go positive but you know you kind of go negative this time so yeah at this point say with the blacks uh, you, you drop it instead of plus 26 minus 26 um, same with uh, the exposure I mean you go say plus 35 plus 44 or 0.44 um, yeah it's it's gonna look dark so you go the other way I mean don't go too far, but yeah. Anyway, as you can see, this is pretty much the final image. I may make a few tweaks after, um, but uh, yeah, it uh, looks, looks pretty good if you ask me. Um, and well, you are asking me, so yeah. But uh, I mean, like the uh, adjustments I've made, I've you know dropped the shadows, which really raise the shadows, raise the whites, which actually drop the whites. Um, raise the contrast, which sort of raise the contrast. Yeah, I know it's a little weird. Um, you know, other adjustments like uh, you know adding some more sharpening. Since I shot at ISO 400, I you know added some uh, noise reduction um, and uh, also added uh, some masks to uh, sort of give it a vignette right around here, um, brightened up the, uh, the path, and uh, also brightened up uh, this, uh, this deer statue. Not a real, not a real deer, because, you know, they don't, they move, you know, real deer do move, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the result, and uh, what can I say? I like it. Uh, I suppose at this point I'll uh, throw myself back into the past and uh, at back at Assiniboine Park, so back to you. All right, so um, guys, as you can see, it uh, films quite interesting to work with. Um, definitely a lot of uh, challenges with it, and uh, in terms of you know shooting and editing the photos, um, I suppose I could have chosen the option to have Don's photo scan and print them for me if I really wanted it to. But I kind of wanted a little more control over it, so figured I'd uh, do that on my own. So uh, at this point, um, I'm done with this roll of film, as you, can, as you, as you saw, and uh, uh, at this point, I'll uh, see you next time. Uh, do the usual, like, comment, subscribe. Ciao, folks.